Hey everyone, hope you're well and hope you're having a good start to the week. I wanted to go over a few articles that I found about some companies that I hold that might be of interest to you and also a story involving Trading212. So if you're currently using their platform, I suggest you stick around because this is something that will most likely affect you. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around. My name's Ben. So it's been an interesting week. We've had a lot of companies in the tech sector have a massive sell-off. This has actually put my Apple position into the negative, so potentially a good time to start picking up some more Apple shares in the near future. And besides that, I'm gonna jump into a story around AbbVie. And the first article states that AbbVie is potentially 46% below their intrinsic value. This has been calculated by the use of a discounted cash flow model, which is essentially trying to value a company by taking into account all their future cash flow. And they've also built in a two-stage growth model within this. This is mainly what you do for companies that you'd expect to grow for a short period of time at a high rate and then peter off in the near future. And that's essentially what they've done with this. So they've split it out separately for each part of that cycle. This two-stage model does forecast that AbbVie's free cash flow is going to grow from around 23.3 billion in 2021 up to an estimated 26.1 billion in 2030. They continue to break down the calculation in the formula and it shows that the intrinsic value for AbbVie is around $200 a share, which when you compare to their current price of $105 a share, means that in theory you're getting around a 50% margin of safety if you were to pick them up and those calculations are correct. Either way, this information does make AbbVie look like a company that's worth reviewing. Just remember to always do your own research and analysis to make sure you come to your own decisions rather than just taking someone on the internet's point of view. But we're now gonna move over to our next story, which is around Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza have recently appointed a new independent non-executive director by the name of Stella David. Stella David has been appointed to the Renumeration and Nomination Committees. Stella has previously worked as a chief executive officer for Scotch whiskey maker William Grant & Sons, as well as global chief marketing officer for Bacardi. And she also served for seven years as a non-executive director at Nationwide Building Society, Domino's are hoping to utilize her experience of value creation with high profile consumer branded companies. And Domino's did end their share price value last week at three pound and eight P. And now looking at the final company specific story, we've actually got one around Main Street Capital. And this article just highlights a couple of concerns around Main Street Capital. Now, I know a lot of people may be looking to pick them up or already hold them, so this might be of interest to you. And I'm sure a lot of people that are interested in dividends know about Main Street Capital. They're a regularly monthly payer who pay out around 6.7%, which equates on average to around 20 cents USD per share per month. The issue that's been highlighted is that Main Street Capital have a forecasted payout ratio of 113%, which means in theory to pay this that they would either have to take on debt to pay the dividend or reduce the dividend payout throughout the year. Therefore, this isn't ideal as we wouldn't want either of those situations to occur. Ideally for me, I would be looking for it to have a payout ratio of around 60%, preferably lower than that, but I'm a bit flexible depending on the style and industry of the company. Main Street Capital currently have a diluted EPS of 0.37, a current net profit margin of 13.2, a high PE ratio of 99.27, a beta ratio of 1.47 and a market cap of 2.49 billion. Main Street Capital also hold a Zacks rank of buy and the share price is currently sitting at around $36 with the next ex dividend date being on the 26th of March. As always, I would suggest doing your own research. I wanted to highlight this as a potential risk or a potential opportunity. It may just be because of COVID and the pandemic that this has happened. So it may improve as we go back to slowly returning to ordinary life. Now, the last story that I wanted to touch on is actually around Trading212, which is the investing broker that I use, and I'm sure that some of you do below. If you currently don't, I do have a link for you to try it out down in the description below, but take into account what I'm just about to say, which is that they are still a commission-free trading broker. However, they will be charging you charges and fees for some activities on the account. The first one got introduced a few months ago, which was a charge on any card payments that go through. And this was a small amount. It took effect after you'd put around 2000 pound into your account. And they did give you alternate options to load money into the account, which didn't take any fees for a bank transfer. The problem here is this new one is a foreign exchange fee that is coming in. 
What this will do is it will charge you on any purchases, sales or dividends that you make in a foreign currency. Obviously this is going to affect me because a large portion of my portfolio is outside of the UK. So any dividends I get are going to get charged this fee. And I'm sure you probably hold a lot of stocks outside of your current country as well. So therefore you may get charged for these exchange fees. So we're gonna to have to account that into our investing strategies. This obviously is going to affect the UK, but as well as that, Trading 212 is across various parts in Europe. I don't know if places dealing with euros is going to be any better off because they actually have more markets than the UK that they can enter in their own currency. However, they are going to be paying to enter into ETFs like the FTSE, as well as any US stocks, the same as any other UK trader. So we're all kind of in the same boat and it's not particularly nice just to have this slipped in last minute by a company that's been boasting about being commission free for the end user. At the end of the day, they are a business and they are intending to make money, even if it is beneficial for us for commission free trading. As a company, if they need to make money, they will do. I believe what they're trying to do is make money by reducing their costs by passing these costs directly onto us. So we would be paying the card payment charges and also the transfer fees, which makes sense. But as I said, it's not particularly nice after they go around saying they're zero fees, everything's free. And then they add these costs in after people have started putting money into the accounts. So what do you think? Is this going to affect your investing at all? And what else do you think they're slowly going to bring in payments and fees for? Do you see this becoming a bit of a pay me game and certain applications can only become available once you've paid certain amounts of money in or if you pay a membership or do you think it's going to stay as it is and just small fees are going to be tacked on here and there as we go forward and that wraps up the news for today i have as always added the links down below for all of the stories that i've used today as well as some additional ones that you might be interested in that i didn't cover in the video but let's move across to my portfolio update and see what's happened in my portfolio over the last week so Looking at the portfolio, we can see that I've had a bit of a return and overall value increase. Last week, my portfolio sat at £2,269 with a return of 3.62%, which has grown over the last week to accumulate to a total of £2,384 and is now sitting at a 7.26 return. If we compare this to the S&P 500, we can see that I've potentially outperformed it, depending how you look at it. As last week, the S&P 500 dropped by 1.5%, though this protection on my portfolio is probably due to my lack of exposure to the tech sector, as I don't hold very many tech stocks and the positions I do hold are relatively small. If we look over to the purchases for the last week, we can see that I made no purchases. Unfortunately, I didn't have the money. I am looking to buy some PPL in the near future. A little bit of background on PPL. They're a company with a market cap of around 21.7 billion. They have a beta of 0.78 and a PE ratio of 14.8. Their EPS is 1.91 and PPL essentially provide gas and electric to large areas through their subsidiaries. And these areas include United Kingdom, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Virginia and Tennessee. And as we know, everyone needs electricity. They allow us to power our devices, watch these videos and smash the like button. PPL over the last year have seen a decrease in revenue. Some of this may have been due to COVID-19 as they do provide a large amount of energy to businesses. And with businesses being shut down during the lockdowns, this hasn't really been helpful for PPL. I am expecting that over the course of the next year or two, as we return to normal life, this will start to increase, which will then bring the company's value up. Also, by picking up this company, I'll add around 30p per share to my quarterly dividends, which is always nice. It's a yield of around 6%, and they have a payout ratio of around 70%, which is a little high, but it ensures there's room for them to actually pay their dividends. That moves us nicely over to the dividends, which is gonna be a relatively quick one this week, because we only had one company pay out a dividend, in the form of ING Group paying 18p for me holding two shares, which I know is not much, but as we've evidenced on this channel before, small amounts and small payments do add up over time to a larger whole. 
Also, ING have returned me around 90% in return on capital growth since I bought the company. So I wish I'd bought more than the initial two shares. That would have been nice, but hindsight is a pain, isn't it? So looking over, we can have a look at my best and worst return of my portfolio. Currently, the best performing asset once again is ITV with a unrealized return of 89.73% which is followed closely by ING Group, who've come in second with 85.37%. And in third place for the bronze is Royal Mail with 65.3%. Looking over to the other side of the field and the worst performing assets, the worst performing asset we have is the like button. So help us out on that one. Drop down below, click a like, come back up while we talk about our worst performing stock in the portfolio. So our worst performing stock in the portfolio at the moment is Dominion Energy with a loss of nearly 18%. This is followed quite swiftly by Walmart with a loss of 14.65%. Overall, I'm still happy with the increase of my overall portfolio and some of these lower ones might be worth looking at and seeing if they've now dropped under value or if there's a potential damage or issue with the business. So that's all of the changes from my portfolio over the last week. If you wanted an overview of the last month in regards to my portfolio, there should be a link down in the description for you to check out, which will take you to my monthly updates section, and you can see how it's evolved over a longer period of time. But for now, that's all from me, so have a good one, and remember to invest, save, and subscribe.